Hello, this is Thinking Out Loud with Ian Curry. Today I have a day off and I've been lolling around most of the day just thinking, reading and generally being lazy. We all need a day like that once in a while, don't we? I find I need to recharge my batteries, spend some time alone, and perhaps eat something I shouldn't, and generally prepare for the next week. Come on, let me tell you what I think. I'm one of those people who can deal with an emergency and not get flustered at all. I seem to just get on with what I need to do and deal with things calmly and quietly. I know some of my friends that can get really frustrated by me being that way. I remember heading to work at a live event where I was working as a TV cameraman and getting stuck behind a huge traffic jam caused by icy roads. I was traveling with a colleague and we were working the same event and he was getting so mad. I didn't make things any easier because I'd put on a favorite classical radio station was humming along to some of my favorite music. I was seemingly completely unconcerned that we were going to be really late. Don't you care we're going to be late? And my friend was looking at me and glaring. Can't you see this is serious? And I wondered, well, what was I supposed to do to show concern? So I asked, well, what would you have me do? Would you like me to toot the horn or hold my breath until I turn purple? And then I held my breath and looked at him like this. And he glared at me. Eventually we laughed and I really wasn't trying to make fun of my friend. I was just saying that really I didn't have any control over the situation and really there was no point in getting all flustered. Of course I was concerned and I wanted to be on time but obviously in that situation there was nothing I could do to change anything and so rather than work myself into a frenzy I enjoyed some good music while we waited for the accident to be cleared from the road. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is a little like this. It's found in Mark chapter 4. Let me read it to you. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. And I've always found that little phrase, although other boats followed, interesting. They must have seen what was going on and perhaps even heard how the story played out. But that's for another day. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care? We're going to drown. That's a bit like my friend yelling, don't you care, we're going to be late, isn't it? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And here's the verse that caught my attention in this story. The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. Why were the disciples absolutely terrified? The reason the disciples woke Jesus up in the first place was because they were afraid the boat was going to fill with water and sink and they were all going to drown. So why, after the storm was calm, were they even more afraid? The verse there says they were absolutely terrified. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? Jesus having a rest and sleeping, and perhaps he's trying to take time out in the busy season of life or something. In my job, we often have to work very strange hours and find ourselves in what we call a sit. It's a time between flights where it can be a few hours in a strange airport where we just sit. 
Some of the crew will find somewhere to get coffee. Others may walk around trying to get some exercise. But mostly we're very good at finding places to hide and get a quick nap, even though the whole world is extremely busy all around us. It's amazing the places you can find a flight crew. In one airport there's a room. Well, it's really not much more than a large cupboard, but it's right in the middle of a concourse, and yet you can pile a full crew in there for an hour or two, and snoring is quite commonly heard to the puzzlement of passing passengers. It's right out there in the middle of where everybody passes. I have a feeling Jesus was as good at grabbing rest when it was available in some strange places. Well, just like the back of the boat in the middle of a storm. But again, why would the disciples terrified once things calm down? Well, one of the things I try to do on a long sit, after I found coffee and a place to hide, is to read a psalm and think about it for a while. Let me show you, and we'll look at Psalm 46, and we'll see what I mean. It starts off with all the busy, drastic stuff going on, while at the same time assuring us that God is there. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble and the waters surge. Well, that sounds a bit like our storm on the lake we were reading about, doesn't it? But take a look at verse 10 there. Be still and know that I am God. Now that's the same thing Jesus said in the boat, isn't it? Well, half of it, the be still part at least. And I wonder if the disciples knew the psalm and when Jesus said, be still, and the storm stopped, they finished the phrase in their heads, adding, and know that I am God. And that's why they were terrified. It's just a thought. Maybe. But today I was really more thinking about getting to take time alone in the middle of busyness, slipping in the boat, as it were. These days it can be really hard to find time to be alone and recharge and I don't take today and my utter laziness for granted at all. It's so important that we take time out and prioritize time for God. Last time I showed you a simple transformer that I made working and how being around that powerful magnetic field could induce power into the secondary coil. We talked about how we needed to be close to God and allow Him to influence us. Yes, of course it's great to have a place to get away from it all. Well, like my thinking chair. And I often find myself here thinking and reading and being alone. But we can be close to God in the middle of really busy situations. But we have to be intentional about it though. It's so easy to find excuses not to do that. But we always pay the price when we don't. Where do you go to recharge your batteries? Do you have a special place where you spend time with God? How do you feel and think after you've spent time with God? While we can meet with God just about anywhere, this might not be the best place in the whole world to do that. There are quite some distractions here, aren't there? And if I don't move soon, I'm going to find it hard to be still for very long. If you've enjoyed this video, do click the like button and subscribe. And please share this with your friends. Oh, and for the really curious, yes, it's a Boeing 757, but quite an old one. And yes, I really do work on this one from time to time. Until next time, goodbye.